А следующий наш разговор про... And our next talk is going to focus on import substitution. This is a topic that's been relevant for the past uh, several months, and it's here to stay. In order to understand better what's happening, uh, I have with me Maxim Filipov, Director for Development, Business Development of Post Technologies, Vyacheslav Barhatov, General Director of Axsoft, and Naidar Guzaid, General Director of InnoStage. Hello. Hello. Let's uh, talk about import substitution, and let's start by your assessment of the current a uh, state of uh, import substitution being the process uh, was initiated uh, some time ago, then uh, it was intensified and something should be happening right now. So what is the current standing of import substitution? Let's start with you, Maxim. Well, uh, from our side of our company, and I think we have a pretty objective perspective on the things, import substitution today has become a process that started and it's going. You don't need to persuade people in anything. Last week, there was a uh, uh, presidential order uh, which said that from 2025, no uh, protection means from... Uh, 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 not friendly countries should be used. But even before uh, this order came out, it was became clear before the start of the military uh, operation, but even before that, actually, like I said, uh, foreign vendors uh, began to leave the Russian market and import substitution is a need that must be addressed quite quickly. It must be addressed quite quite quickly. Um, I mean, uh, today uh, customers are building their processes so that here and now they can solve the problems that they are facing because of a certain position of some of the vendors. All vendors take um, uh, 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 different routes to leaving the Russian market. And then uh, we hear rumors, we hear stories, we know from our customers that uh, some uh, updates, uh, some updates led to a freezing of the products. Uh, other products are not updated, uh, yet other products were left without support. And we know that cybersecurity primarily is expertise, expertise and updates uh, that uh, should be downloaded, that should be installed, and uh, the products can be become obsolete very quickly in the absence of the updates and in the absence of the expertise and support. And this is part of our uh, new reality. We see that many of our customers are looking uh, to substitute the solutions that are leaving the Russian market or potentially are under the risk of uh, being withdrawn from the Russian market. Um, it's the new normal. Dar, what about you? What do you think about import substitution today? Well, I agree with what Maxim said. I, um, I also wanted to uh, talk uh, about the market in uh, general and my feeling of the market in general in the last three months, the time compressed. And import substitution before February, what we had in the market was uh, for for some for some people import substitution before February was uh, a hobby uh, or maybe it was a, a kind of a pretext uh, not to do any import substitution some people believed in it others didn't but uh, today I agree with Maxim time has compressed and I do not see around me any non-believers in the near future it's an irreversible process whether we like it or not it's going to be done today Trust or no trust to foreign vendors, I mean, the answer to everyone is clear, one way or another, import substitution programs must be launched and the customers are doing it as we speak. This is double iron curtain, double iron curtain. There are no external technologies, and internally, uh, the customers do not trust foreign uh, products and do not want to buy foreign products. We even have unique, uh, maybe not very positive cases from the market, but 
контрактов поставляли? The customers, we are also in close contact with the customers, and they are saying that even if uh, uh, today you uh, do a kind of a mental experiment, all the foreign vendors are coming back um, tomorrow and they're offering huge discounts, many of the customers will say no to them. In the past, this risk was seen as hypothetical, it's just a threat. The governments are negotiating that way, and we are businesses, we are outside of uh, Uh, those negotiations but now the risk is real and even if they come back the risk is still here and many customers in the future would not be willing to place their bets on the vendors on the uh suppliers who just like that on a we because of geopolitics many companies won't be outside of geopolitics it's uh, our business we don't want to be involved with geopolitics but they can't be left outside of geopolitics they can't stay neutral uh You are as a customer, um, I mean, customers are the greatest treasure. Uh, they must be your number one priority, but uh, the customers are being set up. Vyacheslav, what about you? What about numbers? Do you see any differences in the import substitution? Uh, do you see the trend accelerating? Well, actually, I will agree with colleagues and uh, before foreign vendors left uh, the import substitution situation was well first of all import substitution can be split into two parts there is infrastructure and there is information security infosec and these are two different processes infosec began to develop russian infosec started to develop much earlier and it started with the development of technologies and products while infrastructure uh import uh, substitution uh started later and there is a big difference between these two components the process of transformation substitution information security started a long time ago and now it's more obvious and it's more visible as a result uh, we have today a lot of available Russian products that we never had before. In the last three months, we saw a surge of uh, new uh, new vendors. Well, did they came out of the blue, or is just that they were not visible? Well, they, it's just that they were not visible. But now there is demand for these products. Our partners, our customers have demand uh, for uh, substitution of uh, this or that product. And suddenly, you see companies that were developing some niche products for some. Uh, one to customers but now they are uh, going national they are going big time and uh, it's uh, one of the probably benefits of the current situation these technologies are becoming more available these technologies perhaps are not very mature yet but uh, soon they will become mature as more and more customers use them as to the demand we see in all segments the demand growing in infrastructure in infosec all kinds of classes of solutions but the most important uh, thing probably that we uh, felt is protection of apps and web services and infosec web uh, and network security exactly network security is something we discussed yesterday you asked about numbers this year again i would uh, divide it into two parts sales request for sales and request for other services right And the demand in sales is growing at 20-30% every year, which is quite a traditional rate of growth. Uh, there are sales, but I mean, we are talking about now, right? Yeah, we are talking about the start of the year. But what's interesting is we see a great demand for new products, completely new products. In March, we launched a website, it's called abnavis.ru.ru, uh, update yourself.ru, uh, where you can find a Russian analog to foreign makes. In the last, say, 45 uh, days, we had about 9,000 unique hits there, unique users 
uh, those who came to the website to find a Russian analog to foreign products. Well, this is an interesting topic, Russian analogs. Um, do you think we'll be able to substitute foreign products? Well, uh, Slava brought up uh, demand into the conversation. All our sales happen through a partner network. And all of our partners are feeling quite positive. They uh, can offer to their clients uh, various technologies. And customers are asking for our products in particular. They are saying, where is positive products? And partners and, and, and customers, they are planning their input substitution in a very precise manner. The InfoSec security uh, landscape is being substituted with Russian analogs. The departure of foreign vendors and I would estimate it at 80 billion, perhaps. Rubles? Yes, 80 billion rubles. And most of that market is addressable with positive technologies products. They are the segments where positive technologies has their own solutions. And today, the biggest challenge for us is to build our relations with customers and with partners in a way that will enable us to be efficient and commercially successful. The value of uh, InfoSec market, we are not sure if it's going to grow or not, but there is this big segment. I mean, we are talking about dozens of billions of rubles here that's been left, and today the market will be redistributed between other players. <clears throat> Let me add something to Maxim's words. In InfoSec market, in this market, you have different stacks of solutions, and these different stacks of solutions have different uh, deployment cycles. In infrastructure, the cycle time will be longer and will be more costly and labor intensive. What I was talking about, look, what kind of range? A year, two years, that's the normal cycle for a project implementation. Another thing is that not all solution stacks have Russian analogs that can be a one-to-one -one match to foreign Western solutions. So you have to be creative in import substitution here and now. The paradigm that we are broadcasting to the market today is that uh, you need to approach import substitution with good thoughts. I mean, you have to start with your current uh, landscape. The trusted environment can be built with residual use of uh, Western solutions. Well, what we should pay attention to? The information monitoring system. In Russia, there are good analogs for security monitoring systems, like the products from Positive. And also, security monitoring systems are a good defense against cyber attacks. And they must be built on the basis of domestic solutions. But again, you have to think about the time uh, time frame of the project deployment. I mean, customers can already get results within six months. And uh, uh, since today we are fighting cyber war, I mean, these solutions are very much in demand. And uh, since we are talking about deployment and long times, once you open the door to a customer and substitute a foreign product there, the vendor can stay there for a long time because to change it back, I mean, if tomorrow the reality is different and we get back to the old tracks, the president's decree uh, talks about 2025. And 2025, uh, the landscape must be free of the solutions from unfriendly countries. And many people in the market comment that this is such a long time, such a long time. Why not now? Well, 
I think that it is a short time. In fact, we don't have much time. Many heavy solutions of information security that require designing uh, of the infrastructure surrounding them uh, left alone the uh, i mean uh, without even mentioning the installation the deployment and live systems i mean this is such a short time frame and today the customers have already started to run and i think that this is a, a hard to achieve deadline this presidential decree also says that uh, the solutions from unfriendly countries must be substituted while we uh, know that some countries are neutral and last week one of the top government officials said at one of the government meetings, I assure that the list of unfriendly countries will not be different by uh, December 2024. So the question is, what are we to substitute? All solutions, not everything. Well, I think that all of the stack must be replaced with domestic solutions. What about industries? Which industries need the um, import substitution immediately? Vyacheslav. Well, from the industry perspective, the government has always been the driving force. Uh, I mean, government-owned, uh, state-owned companies have always led the process for them is, is critical. As to the future, uh, of various industries, I think that we should uh, primarily think about uh, financial structures, transportation, energy, telecom. These are the industries that have great need for security, and they are often victims of all kinds of cyber threats. And also, potentially, this market is open to Russian products. Slava is right. Historically, in the Russian market of cyber security, one of the key drivers has always been regulatory requirements. So I think it's something that we should still consider and factor in. The presidential decree defines the structures and the legal entities for which uh, that process is critical. The uh, system building, the government-owned, government, -owned, government uh, uh, authorities. But what we see today, in fact, is uh, commercial banks, uh, commercial banks that have not nothing to do with government uh, ownership, uh, they are running very, very fast because they feel the need, they feel the urgency. It's not some, you know, uh, government official uh, regulating something uh, for the sake of the greatness of the country, but it's the commercial companies that feel the need. Cybersecurity, cyber stability is the same as business stability, non-stop operation of business. And we see this demand coming from the market today. And to summarize, I'd say it's irreversible. I mean, the process is irreversible. And it's going to last for the next several decades. Why am I saying this? Hypothetically, even if all the foreign vendors come back tomorrow, there is no more any trust to them. And trust in a sensitive area such as cybersecurity means lots. It means loads. Like you, you come to a family doctor, the family doctor knows everything about you, and then the doctor panics and leaves you and says, no, I'm not going to treat you anymore, and I'm going to tell all your secrets to all of the world. Uh, and then in a week's time, the doctor comes back and says, "Say, hey, I panicked, I was wrong, uh, let me treat you again. I don't think you will continue your relations with the doctor. When you enter the infrastructure, you become a trusted doctor, right? Uh, a physician. The client trusts your technology. The client trusts your expertise. You develop the product and the technology together. You make it better. So just to uh, change, you know, the uh, positive solution uh, for some other vendor solution, it will be. Uh, it will take a long time, it will be expensive. This is something that our customers have to do now. They are changing foreign solutions for domestic ones, and they're doing this because they really do not have a choice. But if they had a choice, 
if they had a choice, I mean, this is expensive. It's expensive and it takes a long time. If they had a choice, they wouldn't be doing it and they would be uh, in their rights. So when Russian InfoSec uh, vendors, partners enter the landscape of a customer, it means that they will stay. So again, that's why I'm saying that the process is reversible uh, for the next decades. It's irreversible and it's ambitious because uh, we all now enter a new field of uh, opportunities. There is demand from the market, there is regulation, there is support from the state. There is cyber war. I wanted to say, thank God, there is cyber war, but well, there is cyber war. Everything we are doing now is not going to be tested, not on a virtual mock-up at the standoff. It's going to be tested in uh, real-life settings. And if we can uh, demonstrate the InfoSec, uh, uh, InfoSec uh, maturity of uh, Russian solutions, then it's a good opportunity. Yes, exactly. I think that in InfoSec, uh, uh, Russia can offer excellent products to the global community. We can demonstrate that in the country we've got efficient solutions that can achieve uh, InfoSec objectives that can um, make uh, 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 unacceptable events impossible. And it's built on the stack of technologies that are developed and produced in country. And we don't have an option. We do not have a choice. Yesterday, we had several interviews uh, where we mentioned three global leaders in uh, uh, InfoSec. Uh, everyone agrees that uh, the United States, Israel, and Russia are all leaders of information security. Russia was also always mentioned as one of the leaders uh, of InfoSec. We've got uh, uh, brainy guys here, guys and gals who, who know how to code. So the market is huge, uh, right? Uh, the products are available. What are the risks uh, at the same time? Well, I can talk to this topic. I see two main risks. One risk, as always, I'm responsible for sales, and the nightmare of a salesperson is the customer runs out of money, no more budgets, they can't pay. So the one big risk is uh, customers will not have money, they will not have budgets. But the decree that we keep referring to today, because it's such a new regulation, comes directly from the Russian president, that says that information security is a priority for the state, it is a priority for individual companies and institutions. That's why I think that, uh, I mean, it is the answer, it's going to address the risk in a way and information security will be budgeted for. Risk two is country related. It's everything that's uh, related to hardware. This uh, risk is uh, still with us. Uh, the uh, positive uh, developed solutions, but our uh, software solutions require hardware platforms. Today we have problems in this area and some projects have been suspended or postponed or slowed down because of the lack of uh, hardware. Distributors who are bringing in uh, hardware and the customers and the government even are trying to find solutions. They are trying to uh, get the support. They are trying to find uh, hardware delivery channels for our software products. And we are thinking about it as well. Well, at the moment, we can overcome the shortage of hardware platforms. We hope very much that it will be de bottleneck in the next several months, but this risk is significant, and I'm going to name it as the second biggest risk. Maidar, the HR risk is what I'm seeing. Our uh, strength is in the people, is in uh, their brains and in the level of training of the people. It's a risk. It's not a problem. It's, it's a task that must be uh, solved, must be addressed. And we also see the support from the government. Secondly, the industry itself begins to renegotiate the customers, the vendors, the partners, the integrators. They come to a new uh, agreement that they need to replicate themselves. That is to say, they need to invest into training as a basis for our development. And maybe I can add something to Maxim's words. In terms of budgets, a year ago at PhD, um, at the plenary session, I was saying that uh, the top uh, uh, managers of companies need to pay close attention to infrastructure. Uh, so uh, you have to be careful what you wish for, right? Today, uh, it's all you think about. 
Well, I, God forbid, foreign vendors come back to Russia. Why am I saying this? Then the process, uh, if they do, the process will slow down. And uh, now we are being propelled uh, very fast in the development of these technologies and promotion of these products in the market. Uh, we are catering to the demand that exists, but it can slow down if uh, something goes wrong. If uh, uh, the sanctions are lifted. If the foreign vendors are making a comeback, I think that this will be a new risk for the development of domestic technologies. I think today there are plenty of opportunities for the Russian technologies to be not even in the top three, to be the number one in the world. During our interview, I've been receiving news of this cyber battle. There were three hacks of the railway. So import substitution is a very uh, relevant uh, topic, especially for the companies and industries on which we depend. And I'm uh, happy to hear the optimism in your words. I'm happy to hear you're being optimistic about the future of the Russian infrastructure uh, market. Uh, let's do good products. Let's make uh, secure products, reliable products. Yeah, that's what we're working on.